It's New Year's Day and I'm not hungover, no mother. Like my spice rack? So there's this book called Cracking the Coding Interview. You've perhaps heard of it. It's a very popular book. It's a very good book. And it's on its sixth edition, pretty freshly updated. Last updated 2019, so not too long ago at all. Staying relevant because it does sell thousands of copies every year. In fact, on Amazon, it has over a thousand reviews and most of them are heaping glowing praise upon the pages of this book. But here's the thing, and this is the important thing. If you don't have time to watch the rest of this video, if you don't like my face, I'm just gonna tell you right here. If you're a junior developer, aspiring developer, even mid-level developer outside of Silicon Valley, New York City, maybe Washington DC, this book is going to be a waste of time. No! I know. Maybe you even got this book for Christmas. I know at least one person in my Discord did. This book is strictly for people who are trying to land a job at a fang. Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google. We'll throw Microsoft in there just, just to be safe. There are just under 200 questions in this book covering algorithms and data structures. And these are pretty interesting questions. For example, rotate a 2D matrix 90 degrees counterclockwise in place. And let's see the answer. That's one of the questions and they're, they vary in difficulty. Uh, but that's your typical, I'd say typical question, typical caliber of this book. Now, if you can't answer that off the top of your head, don't worry, because these types of questions are asked all the time at the fangs. Why? Because they're the top tech companies in the world and they can ask whatever they want. These are really advanced trivia questions. And the reason they can do this is because everyone wants to work there and this is a filtering technique. The filter out the candidates who can't jump through this hoop. They could say something obscene like in the interview um, and maybe a lot of people would do it. And what I'm saying is whether it's asking trivial questions like this or asking someone to take their pants off, a lot of people will do it nonetheless. These questions have nothing, next to nothing to do with your typical day-to-day -day web development tasks, your software development tasks, even software engineering. Guys, you're not ever going to rotate a 2D matrix 90 degrees in place as a web developer, okay, ever. They're asking these questions to filter out people who, who won't go through this hoop. This style of interview is its own skill set. And unless you are dead set on working for Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, and a few other companies in Silicon Valley, maybe a handful in New York City, maybe one or two in Washington, DC, stay away from these types of problems. Why? Not because they're toxic, not because they're bad for you, but there is a huge opportunity cost, especially as a junior, because those four hours you spent trying to deserialize a binary tree, which once again, you will never do as a web developer, as a junior web developer. You spent four hours trying to figure out that problem. You could have spent four hours building your portfolio. You could have spent four hours learning about JSON web tokens. You could have spent four hours reading about HTML5 and studying it and coding it. When you dive into these types of materials, it seems like you're being challenged. It seems like, you, you know, you don't know the answers to these questions. You're like, oh, I, I guess I better find out. So it's very easy to get into this rabbit hole. And before anyone mischaracterizes what I'm saying, data structures and algorithms are, are of utmost importance. They're the, the critical component in computer programming. There's no doubt in that. And like I said at the beginning of this video, this is a great book for what it promises. But it's not going to teach you algorithms. It's not going to teach you ADTs. It's not going to teach you data structures. It's not going to teach you anything. It's designed to prepare you for an interview at a top tech company. And the reason they have these types of interviews is because they can. And they know people who want to work there are going to be studying for these things. It's kind of sad because... People confirm, you know, people who have gone to these interviews confirm that some of these questions in that book are asked. So at that point, most of it is just memorization anyway, which is something we don't do as problem solvers. Uh, memorizing a solution to a problem means the problem has already been solved. 
And when you're programming, when you're doing development, you're solving unique problems, bespoke problems. But at like a digital agency, at a company in the Midwest where it's a junior position, uh, any junior position, if you're being asked these types of questions, run. They have no business asking those questions anyway. At least with the FANG, it's like, okay, we can set up this artificial barrier. And again, I want to emphasize these algorithms, these questions you get with data structures and algorithms, these whiteboarding type questions are their own skill set. Even people trying to transition to another FANG job from, let's say they're working at Facebook and they're trying to get to Amazon, they're going to need to study this stupid stuff. Um, and the reason I'm calling it stupid is because it's just so impractical. You got to ask yourself this, why would an employer ask a developer to reverse a linked list? Wouldn't that employer want to know if they can actually code? Wouldn't that employer want to know if they can actually, I don't know, build web apps, debug websites, help their clients? There is not a snowball's chance in hell that any of these questions in this book and many other platforms uh, are going to be applicable at your typical developer job. This book is probably the most well known of all the resources catering to this specific skill set. Lead code is pretty useful in some situations, but again, these things have a huge opportunity cost. And what do I mean by opportunity cost? The minute you start using a resource like cracking the coding interview, leak code, these are taking away from other things you could be doing. And that's the opportunity cost. It's costing you a better opportunity. What could you be doing to increase your skill as a developer, especially as a junior, there's always something to do. There's always something to do at any level. And yes, shameless plug, how to get a job in web development is the course that I created. We don't talk about whiteboard challenges because if, again, if you're being asked these questions, these type of big O notation questions at a junior developer interview, run. In fact, one of my repos is called real world JavaScript interview questions. These are questions submitted by developers. A lot of junior developers who submitted these questions, you will not find in this repo, not yet anyway, any type of crazy crack in the interview type question. And this is not to throw shade at, in, at this book because I think it's a fun trivia book because going through these questions, I'm like, oh, how would I approach this? But I have to be honest, this came yesterday. With this book, you are challenged to work out a problem solving solution. You are challenged to figure out a process. Whereas again, I know I've said it probably six times in this video, these other platforms, Cracking the Coding Interview and all the others, they're more focused on rote memorization. You're not really problem solving with any of these questions because all of these questions have been asked previously. Now, to be fair, and this is something this book actually points out, this is an interesting perspective. Googling something isn't problem solving either. It's avoiding the problem. Um, I'm not sure how much I agree with that. But it is an interesting thing to think about. How much responsibility do we have as programmers to think with our own brains? What is the shame in finding an answer quickly? Is there a difference between an answer and a solution? If that answer is the correct one. So, you know, this, this is the type of thing that this book is making me think. Um, you know, and going in all sorts of different directions with that. If you own Cracking the Coding Interview, it's a great book for your collection. I just think that outside Silicon Valley and for every junior and aspiring developer, this book carries a huge weight when it comes to opportunity costs because it's very easy to get sucked into these challenges because most of us don't know them right off the bat. So you're like, oh, okay, let's research. What's this? What's this? What is a binary tree? What is a heap? What is a set? and all these things. And you're gonna learn about these things eventually. Um, but early on, these types of situations, I mean, most of this stuff you're never gonna use, guys. Ask the, the founder, the developer of Ruby on Rails actually tweeted about this. I don't know when, maybe it was a long time ago, not sure. But just lamenting the fact that he developed Ruby on Rails, but he can't even pass a Fang style whiteboard interview because this stuff is just totally non-applicable. That isn't to say it's useless. It's just not applicable. Guys, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, smash something. Don't break anything. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Come to my live stream. Ooh, it's on this Friday, January, is it January 3rd? I have about 30 
portfolios to review or we're doing it live. It's going to be so fun. I cannot wait. And this is something that ties in precisely to this video. Um, so if you're watching this past January 3rd or something, come check that video out. There it is eventually. It's eventually going to be right here, but not until the 3rd. All right, I'm rambling. Selena's mad and I need to log off and drink another coffee. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to clip this onto Selena's fur so she can speak into the mic and do an interview about um, C++. Was, was that not C++? Oh, it was C Sharp. Okay, sorry about that. So what are your thoughts on the future of C Sharp and, um, you know, where that's going in 2020? Oh, really? Okay, can, can you expand on um, maybe your thoughts on its implementations or... <laughs> Developers, you heard it first. Selena, the coding cat. I'm out.